Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at an introduction to synapses, the presynaptic bulb, the synaptic cleft, the postsynaptic neuron, and then we'll finish with a summary. So a synapse is an important structure in the nervous system. When you see a synapse, it's where we link two or more neurons together. So obviously the body is made up of lots of different neurons and lots of types of neurons, and because they're carrying communication, they need to be able to bridge to each other. And the way that they bridge this is at a synapse. And you can think of it as a junction between one neuron and the second neuron. And it can also link more than two neurons together, so it can have several neurons receiving information from the same neuron. So just to illustrate here, we would have a gap between the end of one cell and the start of the next cell, and this would be what this structure looks like. The purpose of the synapse is to allow the action potential which is propagating along to travel from one neuron to the next, and it's communicated across this gap. So it basically allows the information that's coming along to travel over the gap and to the next neuron. The information comes along and it travels from the presynaptic neuron across the synaptic cleft to the postsynaptic neuron. So there's a few specific terms you need to know here. We've got three elements across the synapse. First of all, we have the synapse before the neuron, so we call it the presynaptic neuron. It then has to cross the gap between the two neurons, and this gap is called the synaptic cleft. Cleft meaning a kind of gap between two things. And then finally we have the last element, which is the postsynaptic neuron, the cell after the synapse, hence the post before its name. And that would be this neuron. So whenever you write about synapse in an exam, it's really important to be specific in using these terms so that the direction of the information traveling is clearly represented. So first of all, let's talk about the first element of the synapse, which is called the presynaptic bulb or presynaptic knob. It's basically a swelling at the end of the axon, and it's the axon of the presynaptic neuron. So remember, we've got action potentials traveling down this axon and arriving at this swelling, which is the bulb. And this is the presynaptic neuron. So the synapse is slightly thicker than the axon itself, and it tends to be filled with some synaptic vesicles. And they're membrane-bound vesicles filled with neurotransmitters. So here's the synaptic bulb. And here you can see these spherical vesicles, and they're basically membrane-bound, and they're containing particular chemicals. So the membrane obviously surrounds the cell as a normal cell membrane would, but you can have internal membranes as well, like vesicles, carrying these chemicals. And in this case, at the synapse, the chemical that these vesicles contain are called neurotransmitters, which are important for the function of the synapse. So the function of neurotransmitters, for example, one of these types of neurotransmitter is called acetylcholine. They're basically particular chemicals that stimulate the postsynaptic neuron. So the presynaptic neuron has these vesicles, and across the synapse, the vesicles are going to release this neurotransmitter to go into the cleft. And the neurotransmitters are going to go across this synaptic cleft and act at the postsynaptic neuron, and then stimulate it so that it can then carry its own information onwards. So they're the kind of bridge between the presynaptic neuron and the postsynaptic neuron. The vesicles are membrane bound and they're made in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So remember, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is an organelle. So remember, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, or SER, is an organelle found in the cells, which has multiple functions, and one of its functions is to make membrane-bound vesicles. So these vesicles are made at the SER, and therefore they go down to this synaptic bulb to be ready to start sending out these neurotransmitters. When these vesicles are being released from the presynaptic neuron, they require ATP to do this. So the synaptic bulb not only contains the endoplasmic reticulum, but it also contains mitochondria in the presynaptic bulb. So here we can see a mitochondrion, which main focus of the mitochondrion is to produce ATP, which then drives the release of the vesicles and the spread of neurotransmitters out to the synaptic cleft. And the final feature of these synapses is that the synaptic bulb has voltage-gated calcium channels present in its membrane. So looking again at the presynaptic bulb in the cell membrane towards the end, we see these proteins embedded in the membrane, and these are voltage-gated calcium channels. So remember not to get mixed up between different voltage channels. These are carrying calcium ions through them, not sodium or potassium. 
And the purpose of these proteins in the membrane is to detect when an action potential arrives at the end of the axon. Because when an action potential arrives at the end of the axon, it's signaling that this message needs to get across the synapse. And then that detection that this has arrived will go through these channels. So the next part of the synapse, which we need to discuss is the synaptic cleft, which is the gap between the pre and the postsynaptic neurons. The neurotransmitters get released from those vesicles from the presynaptic bulb, and then they go into the synaptic cleft. So up to this point, what we've had is an arriving action potential triggering the release of these vesicles. And as the vesicles get released into the membrane, the neurotransmitter gets released into the synaptic cleft. the space between the two neurons. The synaptic cleft is very, very narrow. It's about 20 to 30 nanometers wide, and this is about the width of a bacterial flagellum. So remember, bacteria are much smaller than eukaryotic cells, and the width of that flagellum is about the same as the width of this synaptic cleft, about 20 to 30 nanometers. And this is useful because the minimum amount of space means this traveling distance is minimized, and therefore the information can quickly get from one cell to the other. As well as there being spreading neurotransmitters in the synaptic cleft, also contained are enzymes which help to break down the neurotransmitter. Because when that neurotransmitter is finished with, the enzymes present in the cleft need to break it down so that it doesn't keep firing across. So here we have enzymes ready to break that neurotransmitter down and stop the signal. And finally, the postsynaptic neuron is the last element we need to discuss. Once the neurotransmitter has diffused across the synaptic cleft, it reaches the cell membrane of the second cell, which is the postsynaptic neuron. So as you can see, as the neurotransmitter goes across the cleft, it reaches the second cell, which is only 20 to 30 nanometers away, and this is the postsynaptic neuron. And what we find on the membrane of the postsynaptic neuron facing this direction are proteins called neurotransmitter receptors. So remember, in a cell membrane, we can have certain proteins embedded in, and sometimes these proteins are receptors. And they're proteins designed to respond to particular chemicals that can bind to them, and then this sets off some sort of response. So in this case, these channels here are neurotransmitter receptors, and so they're going to respond to the presence of these neurotransmitters in the cleft once they arrive. The receptors themselves aren't just receptors, they're actually specialized ion channels that close or open when a neurotransmitter binds to them. So there are different types based on the different neurotransmitters, but it can either be open or it can be closed. And the point is it allows the transport of particular ions in and out of the cell, depending on what one it is. In one example, we can have what's called a cholinergic synapse, where the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine, and on the postsynaptic cell, we have an acetylcholine receptor opening if the acetylcholine binds to it. So let's say that we have the postsynaptic cell membrane here. And inside the cell membrane, we have this neurotransmitter receptor. In this case, the acetylcholine receptor. And when it's not bound to acetylcholine, the channel is closed. However, if the presynaptic neuron has released vesicles containing acetylcholine. The acetylcholine is going to diffuse across the cleft and then bind to the receptor. And in doing so, it's going to open the channel. Now this ion channel can allow the movement of particular ions in or out of the postsynaptic cell and therefore set up the correct response for the information to travel or not. In the case of the acetylcholine channel, this causes sodium to enter into the cell. So once this channel has been activated, after acetylcholine has bound, sodium ions from the cleft diffuse into the postsynaptic cell. And this will trigger the setup of a new action potential in this cell, and so the information can travel onwards. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revise smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.